Grace, mercy, and peace be with you all from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is All Saints Day, a very special day in the church year, which we set aside to remember and honor all the saints. They are the famous saints we meet in the Bible. They are the martyrs who gave their life for their faith. They are other bright lights throughout history who have inspired us by their witness. They are the faithful whose names are remembered only by God. And they are the living saints around us now. All Saints is all of that, but it is also a day to acknowledge and remember and honor the ones we knew and loved who have gone home to God ahead of us. Candles are shining around the font in loving memory of 48 members and friends of St. Philip the Deacon who have died since All Saints last year. During the prayers, we will say those dear names and a chime will ring for each. As we say each name, I encourage you to pray for their families. Also, a candle is floating in the waters of the font for all the other dear ones we knew and loved, whether they died days or decades ago. We remember and give thanks for them, too. The candles remind us of the light of Christ, the light no darkness can overcome, as candles always do in church. But today they have additional meaning. They honor the light these saints shined into our lives and into our world. They are part of what the writer of Hebrews calls the great cloud of witnesses from all times and places that in some mysterious, beautiful way surrounds and upholds us. We give thanks for them, not necessarily for their perfection, but in all their uniqueness and talents, their foibles and fumbles, their love, for all the ways God's grace somehow worked in them and through them. Just people, just dear to us, who in a myriad of ways reflected God's love. Our gospel reading today is so tender. As you heard, it is the account of the death of Lazarus, who was the brother of Mary and Martha, Jesus' good and dear friends, whom he loved. Jesus cried with them over his death. Jesus wept. Even knowing that he would raise Lazarus from the dead, Jesus wept. And that, I think, is a true and beautiful picture of all saints and where we may find ourselves today. We trust and believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. We believe that our loved ones who have died are safe with him and that someday we will all be gathered around the table together again at the heavenly banquet. We are resurrection people. We can be absolutely filled with faith and trust in Jesus and the resurrection from the dead. And at the same time, we can weep for those we have lost. Jesus knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, but his heart was still broken. My friends, if your heart is quite tender today, it's okay. The church gives us this gift every year, this holy day, all saints, when we are not alone in our loneliness for those who have died. We are all in this together. The faithful across the world are taking out their memories and holding them in their hearts. And we're giving thanks to God for holding close our dear ones. If you are feeling tender today, it's okay. We can miss them with deepest sorrow and at the same time be filled with joyful gratitude that they are secure in our Lord's shining presence. And if today you are remembering someone special who has died, then I encourage you to do one more thing, to honor them. Share a memory 
or a story with someone else. And then invite that person to do the same about whoever they are missing. What person is on your heart? What memory could you share? With whom could you share it? I will invite my brothers to share memories of my sister Jackie. We still miss her every day. And I will invite my husband to share a memory of his excellent father. It will be a blessing to remember them together, to hear their names again. The reading from Revelation is a splendid one for today, and to me, one of the most beautiful readings in all of the Bible. Each year on All Saints, I love to enter fully into this reading in sacred imagination with you all as John shares with us his vision of heaven. So let's see with John, a huge multitude of the faithful from all over the earth, too many to count, standing before the throne of God and Jesus the Lamb. They are robed in white because they have been cleansed by Christ's death, and some are holding palm branches in their hands, a symbol of martyrdom and triumph. Notice, they are filled with joy. They are singing to God. Their joy is significant because John wrote in a time of persecution of Christians when people were required to say the emperor is God or lose their livelihoods or their very lives. But they could not say that anyone other than Jesus is the Lord. Everyone around the throne came through some kind of ordeal because that is part of living and being faithful. And now they are seeing with their own eyes what they only glimpsed in this life, and they are singing it out with joy. Salvation belongs to our God. And now they are sheltered by Jesus the Lamb, who wipes away every tear from their eyes. Those being persecuted for their faith throughout time have read this passage and have heard that it is not any emperor, not any power, not any evil. No, it is the Lamb of God who was slain for them, who is truly the Lord of all history. They heard assurance that the faithful will ultimately have life and joy in eternity with God. In this passage, we too can hear our Lord saying to us, in the hard times, in times of loss and grief and war and crisis and contentious elections, we can hear this message from God. Live in hope. Persevere. Continue to be faithful. God is with you. Christ is beside you. And at the last, you will sing with all the saints, salvation belongs to our God. So let's enter John's vision with him once again. Can you imagine the multitude of the faithful in the presence of God, finally healed and joyful? Imagine all those people from all times and from all places, even from our time and place, sheltered by the Lamb of God. And in that great crowd, for whose beloved face are you searching on this All Saints Day. Your husband, your wife, your child, your mom or dad, your grandparent, your dear friend. Can you see them? Can you find them? Ah, there they are. See their faces, still familiar and dear, but radiant. Do you see those who lived long, full lives and also those who left us far too soon? All their bodies now strong, their minds now vibrant, all the hurts healed by the presence of the Lamb, every tear wiped away. What a beautiful sight. And let's remember, we are one with them there is one church with some of us in heaven and some of us on earth. We are one body united by the love of God. 
we are knit together with the whole company of the faithful. In our lessons and carol service, we pray it this way. Let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore, and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom we forevermore are one. May God bless you, my friends, on this tender day. May God's arms be wrapped around you as you remember and miss and give thanks. And may your tears be blessed. In the name of Jesus, amen.